It's really all about two simple questions. Is man-made global warming really a threat? And if it is, what does it mean for the future of our climate? If I'm going to get my head around the theories behind climate change, then I've got a lot of ground to cover. So I'm off home to the Lake District to come up with a plan. Oh, welcome to my study. You can see it's a bit more than that. It's where I keep all my outdoor kit and do all my expedition planning. Good place for inspiration. But I've got to get down to some work. I thought I'd do some reading and do some studies on the internet to see where the science really is at the moment. One thing's for sure, I'm not short of information. Global warming's everywhere. Newspapers, books, the internet, and the BBC, of course. The Arctic is changing and it matters to us all. It's a dramatic transformation. And we're on course to see the Arctic lose its ice for the first time in 800,000 years. Now I can see that global warming makes a good headline. After all, bad news sells. But are we really on the brink of a climate disaster, as all these reports suggest? You know, I'm old enough to remember another big climate disaster story. 30 years ago, there was loads of talk of another impending disaster, just like there is now. It was all summed up in this documentary made at the time. Take a look at this. There's the ever-present threat of a big freeze. Will a new ice age claim our lands and bury our northern cities? It's buried Manhattan Island before, when great glaciers half a mile thick filled the valley of New York's Hudson River. The, the warm periods uh, are much shorter than we believed originally. Uh, they are uh, something around 10,000 years long. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say that the one we are living in now has just passed its 10,000 years birthday. What of course means that uh, the Ice Age uh, is due now any time. So, 30 years ago, we'd had a few cold winters and that was enough to get everybody worried about a new Ice Age. Now it's warmed up a bit and we're all panicking about global warming. Now I understand the greenhouse effect. I get how gases like carbon dioxide trap the sun's heat in the atmosphere, rather than letting it escape into space. And if we keep pumping out carbon dioxide, then it's bound to have some effect on climate. If you look at the facts, it is pretty clear that the world is warming up. But let's not get carried away here. According to the experts, the world has warmed up 0.6 of a degree in the last 100 years. Less than one degree. I can't help feeling that this whole panic over global warming is a bit of an overreaction. Now, I'm not really an expert on history, but I do remember stories from the past that suggest to me people have experienced far worse than this. Huge shifts in climate that have moved people all over the world. Maybe we've just gone a bit soft. To really understand global warming, I think we need to put it into some kind of historical context. Look at the way the climate has changed over thousands of years. So that's what I'm going to do. First stop, Dartmoor. I used to come here when I was a lad learning to map read. Today we think of this as a pretty bleak and inhospitable place. But there's evidence that it wasn't always so. Helen Wickstead is an expert in the archaeology of Dartmoor. You're in the middle of an extensive Bronze Age settlement. It's going as far as the eye can see over in that direction, over the hill there for kilometres, and uh, right down there as far as the enclosed land. Three and a half thousand years ago in the Bronze Age, people were living up here, which is a bit of a puzzle to me because Dartmoor can be a particularly harsh environment, cold, wet and windy. 
but apparently that didn't deter our distant ancestors. It's a great big Bronze Age house. Boy, can you, can you big, make out the walls? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a massive one. It's really impressive. It's much impressive. bigger than I thought it was going to be. Well, we know there are just under 6,000 of these stone houses. Yeah. And we also know from excavation mm -hmm. that there are timber houses as well. So, in fact, the, the National Parks say that this is the greatest density of Bronze Age sites in the whole of Europe. Yet archaeologists can find no evidence for settlements before or after the Bronze Age. So there must have been something special about this period that made Dartmoor such a desirable piece of real estate. And recently there's been a breakthrough. Scientists have dug up ancient peat from the Bronze Age. They found it was full of tiny creatures. Creatures that were notable for one particular reason. They thrived in warm and dry conditions. So it was warmer up here then? People lived up here because it was easier and warmer living. From evidence from peat bogs up mm -hmm. here, we know that the time at which they're coming up here and building these round houses is the warmest and driest that it's been since the end of the Ice Age. And we know that people were living at altitudes that they never, where they never reoccupied. So they, people haven't lived in this area since. Even today, it still isn't as warm on Dartmoor as it was three and a half thousand years ago during the Bronze Age. It strikes me that this could easily be evidence of natural rhythms in the climate system that are at least as powerful as global warming is today. I suppose it's possible the Bronze Age warm period was just a one-off, an historical fluke, not that relevant to global warming but I know another story from history that suggests it may just have been one in a regular cycle of warm periods. To find out more, I'm off to Roskilde in Denmark. They're proud of their Viking heritage in these parts, and it's a story from this period I'm interested in. It combines two of my great passions, sailing and exploration. It's the story of the Vikings in Greenland, but it's also a story about climate change. At the centre of this story are the Vikings' ships. Brilliant boat design and construction allowed the Vikings to become some of the greatest explorers in history. And we know just how good their boats were, because several of them have been discovered almost intact. Here in Roskilde, they've rebuilt some of those Viking ships to bring those great voyages of exploration to life. And this is one of those ships. Has been anything I can do to help? OK, it's got a modern-looking crew, but pretty much everything else about this boat is just as it would have been a thousand years ago. In the late 10th century, more than a thousand years ago, a boat just like this set off from Iceland. It headed west into the unknown. But this is not a fighting boat. That's a fighting boat. Look at the lines, long, narrow, very fast. This is a cargo boat, and on board were people hoping to find a new home. They were following a dream to create a colony on new land they believed lay on the other side of the North Atlantic. I find it amazing they took boats like this right across the Atlantic, although they wouldn't have got very far on a day like today. But there wasn't much shelter for people. No, I mean, um, they probably had some kind of cover for them to, to sort of hide under, like a canvas or whatever. But basically, you would be sitting uh, in the open, uh, yeah. in the rain for 10, 15 days. Oh, there were families and they had livestock and they had everything for, for making a living, oh, getting there. Just been an and, entirely yeah. desperate journey. Yeah. I mean, these people must have been determined to yeah. find a new home. Yeah, just accepting a different level of discomfort than we are from what we are today. 